Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1743. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today, I'm in Newberry Park, which is just north of Los Angeles, where the sun is always shining with a very special returning guest here on Cars Yeah by the name of Michael Harley. Michael, welcome back to Cars Yeah, my friend. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I am buckled up. Three-point harness. Yeah, you're always driving something insanely cool. I'm so jealous of seeing your social media posts and all the cool cars parked in your driveway. And we're going to talk about that in a minute once I give you a proper introduction. But before I do, I didn't ask you this when you were a guest before. And I'll let my listeners know, Michael was on the show back in July 2015. He was guest number 302. He was one of those very nice people that took a chance with me when I was just starting this crazy idea of a podcast. Now he's guest 1743. So I've hopefully gotten a little better, a little more seat time here. What's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Michael? Uh, They don't know. I have a Cadillac Elante. Okay. Now I know that, but most people who follow you, especially social media, will go, what? Why? Most people would never, ever know that I'm, uh, you know, I've got this reputation of being a Porsche guy, yeah. obviously. Oh, yeah. And uh, I tend to really like to review the high end premium cars, uh, big horsepower, really sophisticated stuff. And uh, I acquired a Cadillac Elante, 93 Cadillac Elante with the North Star V8, by the way, okay. uh, over the summer. And I drive it quite a bit, but I don't talk about it that much. But um, it's a cool retro car and it sort of grounds me. You know, doesn't have uh, all the sophistication of, of you know, no CarPlay, no Android Auto, it's no stability control, but um, it's a cool car, retro cool car. Yeah, very cool. Well, there you go. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. We're going to dive into some new things that you're doing. I always love having guests come back that are onto new adventures, new things in their lives, because it tells those folks out there that maybe feel like they need a change, but they don't want to step out on that limb and do it, that it's okay. It's a good thing. So here we go. Michael Harley is the executive vice president and editor in chief at Car Expert. He's a noted automotive industry expert who has held roles at Kelly Blue Book, JD Power and Associates, Autoblog, AutoWeb, Auto Trader, and Auto by Tell. I see auto and car in your uh, resume is really prevalent here. As a respected industry analyst, he's been quoted by the Wall Street Journal the New York Times, the LA Times, and USA Today. Michael has appeared on ABC's Good Morning America, CBS, NBC, and Fox News, and his work has appeared in Forbes, New York Daily News, European Car, Excellence, one of my favorites, and Panorama Magazine, another Porsche favorite. Michael has also served as president of the Motor Press Guild, the largest professional media association in North America, And guess what? His first book, which I'm looking at right now, sitting on my coffee table, One More Than Ten, Singer, in the Porsche 911, was published back in 2015. He also drives an older Cadillac, as he said. We'll be back in just a minute to talk with Michael about his newest venture at Car Expert. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Our pets are part of the family, but they can be very hard on your vehicle's interiors. Do you have a pet in your household that loves to go for rides? Covercraft offers a wide variety of solutions to protect your vehicle's interior from Fido's rough treatment. Canine cargo area covers are padded for comfort and provide door-to-door protection. Pet pads have built-in features and keep cargo areas and your seats protected. Covercraft's quality pet solutions cover cargo areas, bucket or bench seats, and protect from damaging claws, pet fur and hair, mud, moisture, and drool from permanently damaging your vehicle's interior surfaces. Choose from a variety of styles and covers for almost every vehicle made. And I've got a deal for you. Cars Yeah listeners are going to get 10% off if you use the code YEAH21, that's Y-E-A-H-21, Simply use the code YAD21 at checkout at Covercraft.com. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. When it was time to renew my last policy for my collector car, my carrier's rates went up. They went way up. But my usage was the same and I never had made a claim. No tickets, nothing. What's with that? American Collectors Insurance, that's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. 
the one I call my orange crush. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? I was too. So I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations, and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, am I glad I did. I'm saving hundreds of dollars. I can sleep at night knowing my baby is properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provide me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. What could be better than that? Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love like I did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Michael, we are back. And I want to start this new journey with you with perhaps a new success quote, a new mantra, some kind of and a meaning, meaningful thing that keeps your life going in the right direction. I know you love to drive because you drive all the cool stuff. So grab the wheel. Uh, you know, many, many years ago when I was a little kid, no, a little kid, I look at a little kid now, but uh, early teenager, uh, a friend of my dad's, you know, offered me advice. And you don't take any advice when you're 12 or 13 years old. But he said, <laughs> never decline, never decline an introduction. And I never really knew what that meant until I was in my probably early 30s, I hate to admit. And it was always try to meet as many people as you can. You never know when it's going to come back full circle. And uh, I started applying that in my early 30s. And today, just about every single thing I do Mm -hmm. is based on somebody I have already met. I know a guy. Hey, he knows a person. And, uh, you know, so now I'll go out of my way. If possible, even yesterday, I met two or three brand new people for the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the guys actually had my book. So um, (laughs) it came full circle. But I always try to reach out and meet as many different and unique people as possible, whether in the same industry as I am or a completely different field, because you never know when it's going to come full circle and you're going to need to call on that person. You know, it's absolutely true. I do that five days a week. Uh, I've done it 1,743 times, although I'll back one off because you're a returning guest. So (laughs) 1,742, but it's so important and especially in this industry, but you're right. Never miss an opportunity to meet somebody new because you just don't know. And when we talk about your newest venture here with carexpert.com, I'd love for you to take that nice segue you did there of how you got involved with Car Expert. I understand this company is not a U.S.-based company, but it's right down your roadway, if we will, of what you love to do. And also, this isn't the only thing you're doing, too. You're doing a lot of cool stuff. You mentioned in our pre-show chat, you just recorded a, a spot for a television commercial. So you're kind of all over the place, but that's perfect for a guy who loves to drive. So let's talk first about Car Expert. What is it? What are you doing there? And why do people need to know about CarExpert.com? Well, let me back up really quick. And uh, the Car Expert also started with the introduction production thing. Uh, about two years ago, a buddy of mine, uh, Johnny Lieberman works at Motor Trend. He's uh, one of their senior editors. He said, hey, a bunch of us are going to grab a bunch of high performance Porsches and drive up to San Francisco and back down and never hit a main highway. We're just going to take all the back roads and just do a, a guy's road trip. And one of the guys was someone named Pat Devro. And he was one of the founders of Top Gear, and he all now owns Petrolicious. And he just happened to be one of the guys in one of the cars that we met for the first time. We hung out for two to three days, and that was two years ago. Uh, fast forward to this summer, uh, summer of 2020, this past summer, and Pat called up and said, hey, I'm launching a brand new website based on, on an Australian site called Car Expert, and uh, would you like to help me run it? So uh, this nice. was, Pat had remembered me from a couple years ago. We got along really well, and he knew that I was editor-in-chief at Kelly Blue Book. And uh, so he offered me the role. And Car Expert, it's an all-new site for North America, but it's a site that's existed in Australia for over a year right now. And it's a site designed to help in-market car shoppers uh, decide whether that's the car they want or not. So unlike a lot of sites like Motor Trend, Car and Driver, even Consumer Reports that give you a lot of fluff and a lot of story. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are the person that, hey, I think I want a 2021 Honda Accord. You go to Car Expert and we tell you the trim levels, the prices, what our favorite trim level is, and what we think about the vehicle. So you're not going to read a whole bunch of stuff about, hey, we did a road trip to Grand Canyon and the kids uh, put five cup holders in the back seat and spilled, you know, Kool-Aid all over the back <laughs> of our windows. Uh, this is 
very practical advice and uh, targeting someone who really wants to buy a car that week or that month. You know, this is pretty cool because car buying has become so complex. I'll take a, a mark that is a favorite of yours and mine, Porsche. When mm -hmm. you go on their website and you build a car, you can get caught up in a spider web of options that just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And at some point now when you're doing it as a fantasy evening run, like I do many times, you don't care about the price. You just go, yeah, I'll take that, that, that. Nah, I may not want that. But it gets pretty daunting. And now they've got all these darn packages where if you just want a heated steering wheel, you got to buy it with the cold weather package, which turns a heated steering wheel into a $3,500 option, which is like, I don't want that? that why do i need that so this is pretty cool so you're really helping people make those smart decisions is this primarily for new car buying or also if you're looking at used cars oh right now we're looking at the new car buyers and like you said i mean look at the 2021 toyota camry has 11 different trim levels right now <laughs> you get le's se's uh, xle's hybrids non-hybrids uh performance trd models and uh, our site doesn't have any advertising whatsoever so when you go to read a toyota review you're not going to have a honda accord you know ad blinking on the right side so it's very clean on a mobile device but the idea is to go in and help primarily new car shoppers right now to go and uh, determine literally if you or your wife want to go buy a Camry tomorrow, you can go to our site and say, you know what? I think the XLE hybrid that starts about 32000 is the right one. Yeah. You know, I think these car manufacturers need to read that book by Barry Schwartz, The Paradox of Choice. <laughs> it's a book that came out years ago, but it, one of the case models it talked about was the Gap. Remember when you went to the Gap and they really only had like three different options for jeans? Right, right. And they right. were super successful. And then somebody got the brilliant idea that you need 100 options for jeans. And you'd walk into the store and there'd be that wall and you go, I just want those ones I bought before. Mm -hmm. And people, it's like going to a restaurant that has a menu that's two pages versus 20. Cheesecake Factory. Oh, God. <laughs> No, thank you. And, and that's the cheese. And it's the uh, In and Out Burger, which we have on the West Coast. Yeah. Versus Cheesecake Factory and In and Out Burger. There's a secret menu, of course, but when you walk in there, there's just one board yep. that's got a hamburger, a cheeseburger, or doubles. Yeah, and if you know the secret, uh, what's that animal animal <laughs> right. style? I think one's animal style or something like that. Yeah. You can go, absolutely, it's animal style, and you can go crazy. But the Cheesecake Factory is uh, it's the Toyota of today. Too many choices, and you've got Chinese food, you've got uh, Italian food, and American food all mixed together. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, it sounds really, really cool. CarExpert.com is where you can go and cruise that and find out more about it. Now, what are some of the other things that you're involved in? Because as we were having a pre-show chat, I mean, you're doing a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm doing a lot of stuff. I'm doing some um, work with uh, influencers because now you have this whole new brand of marketing and sales uh, with people that influence. These are people that have a lot of followers on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm doing consulting work. I'm helping uh, John Hennessy right now launch his new Venom F5 supercar. Uh, I've shot some commercials, shot some videos, just trying to you know, expand and diversify because uh, you know that in this industry, it's continuously changing yeah. and um, you want to sort of be uh, known as the chameleon. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to lock yourself in as, hey, I'm the guy that reviews three quarter ton pickup trucks only. Right. <laughs> you want to yeah. be the person that says, sure, I could do television, I could do radio, and uh, I can also review a car and I can manage a team. So the more diverse you are the more chameleon you are the better off you are of having a very successful career at least in this industry well absolutely and you do some writing our, our mutual friend pete stout another porsche guy your article in the newest triple zero magazine is great i enjoyed that last night by the way which was very very cool so yeah being the chameleon uh definitely that's a good way to, to do things and you're great in front of a camera you're a great speaker and you obviously love cars and like i said i'm eternally jealous every time I see you post something going, <laughs> oh, look what he gets to drive today. I want to be driving that thing. So kudos to you. I'm really happy for where you've landed, what you're doing. Sounds like you're happier than you've ever been, which is always a really good thing. Now, I, I do like to ask a challenge question, and I like to ask it for this reason. It's more about how you came out positive on the other end. Uh, this could be career, life, whatever it might be. It doesn't really matter, but it's more important to tell us how that particularly somewhat painful experience helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your career and your life. So take us on a little journey. 
Uh, you know, mine is often, I don't want to say, uh, overextended or found myself in unfamiliar or, um, uncomfortable situations. What Mm -hmm. I mean by that is, uh, I wanted to make the move over to Kelly Blue Book four years ago. And, uh, I had been an automotive journalist, had all the auto properties before that, obviously, yep. but Kelly Blue Book was not looking for an automotive journalist. They were looking for an industry analyst. And I was very unfamiliar, but I applied for the industry analyst job, made it through the interview process and was hired as an industry analyst. And I really didn't know, I could say now what I was doing. So what I did was I forced myself to learn and to watch other people and to learn about the industry. And, uh, you know, there were many sleepless nights where I was nervous and I would went into meetings with butterflies in my stomach, but I learned and it was just maybe another color of my chameleon experience. And I learned to adapt and it turned out to be a really good experience. Um, I was pretty good at it. And now when I look back, I can look at things from a journalist viewpoint and an analyst viewpoint and an industry expert viewpoint. So it's just putting myself in something that was a little uncomfortable, but uh, challenging myself at the same time. You know, it's brilliant. My guest yesterday was Amanda Busick, and she's a reporter, a sports reporter, race drag reporter for Fox and all sorts of different networks. And she said the same thing. One of her her parting comment was just say yes. And that was the idea is put yourself in a situation where you've never been before by saying yes to those opportunities. It's kind of like what Sir Richard Branson uh, said. There's a great quote by him. Say yes to an opportunity. Figure out how to do it later. And Mm -hmm. by by doing that, you make yourself uncomfortable. But one thing I've learned talking to so many people, Michael, is when we make ourselves uncomfortable, we grow. And when we look back, we go, boy, I'm glad I did that. Because again, my chameleon colors, I just added another color to that chameleon skin of mine, if you will, uh, definitely works. So uh, very, very happy that you did that. And I'm sure you are too now because you've got another page in your resume to, uh, to share with people and, and show people. And you definitely do a great job with that when it comes to cars. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. We come back. I want to dive into your personal history because it's been so long since you've been on the show here. Gosh, almost six years. Could that be true? Holy cow. Time is flying by. A little scary. I, oh my God. You know, I look at my kids <laughs> and I look at your kids who you share things with online and I go, man, his kids are getting old. They're all, they're, they're all grown up now. It's pretty cool. And watching you teach your daughter how to drive a stick. I mean, it brings back some great memories for me. So sit tight, <laughs> keep the seatbelt on. Yeah. Teenager at the wheel. You got to keep your seatbelt on. We'll be right back. GS Events was founded by Cindy Sisson and Teresa Gilpatrick. Together, they create strategic alliances, curated events, and business development connecting automotive brands to discerning audiences. Their flagship offering, Women Shifting Gears, amplifies women's voices and participation in the automotive culture. Through strategically developed events, they create innovative concepts and collaborations that create remarkable professional and personal experiences you won't find anywhere else. GS Events' immersive, inclusive opportunities create networking, skill building, and unforgettable experiences. Whether you enjoy rallies, concours, auctions, restoration, the business side of collective cars, or you always have yearned to expand your skills to drive vehicles, To its fullest potential, GS Events has automotive events and experiences designed just for you. And by the way, both Cindy and Teresa are past guests here on Cars Yeah, so give them a listen. You can find gsevents.live on their website today. Hey, fellow inspiring automotive enthusiasts, did you know if you subscribe at carsyeah.com, I'll send you my free filler up book? It's an ebook filled with fuel, filler fun, and inspirational quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get a weekly wrap up email from me every Friday, and your name will be in the hat for one of the many free giveaways here at Cars Yeah. Simply go to carsyeah.com and click on the free book button, and boom, you're in the club. And don't forget to subscribe to Cars Yeah on your mobile podcast app, and you'll get the Cars Yeah show delivered right to your mobile device every day, absolutely free. Inspiring automotive enthusiasts, that's what we're all about. Here at Cars, yeah. Thanks for listening. Today's vehicles are essentially computers on wheels, and it takes more than a wrench and oil to keep them humming. That's why Cars, yeah supports TechForce Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to driving tomorrow's workforce of skilled technicians forward. 
Techs keep our cars, trucks, airplanes, and fleets rolling. Yet there's a massive tech shortage because many young people don't know it's no longer a blue-collar job. Today, it's a new-collar career. It involves computers, technology. It's in high demand. You get paid really well. And you can live and work anywhere in the country. I know you're passionate about cars, trucks, and motorcycles. And you can help pass that passion on to the next generation of techs so our rides keep rolling down the road. Visit techforce.org today and learn how. All right, we are back. What was that pivotal moment in your life, Michael, when you knew you were a bit of a car guy? Oh, this is quite funny, but it goes right back to like probably 1982, 83. And I was probably 14 years old. And my dad said I could move the car out of the driveway into the street. Okay. And I had never, ever really piloted a car other than probably when I was five years old sitting on my dad's lap where he turned the steering wheel. And we had a 1979 Audi 5000, probably 100, I believe 102 horsepower inline five, naturally aspirated. Yeah. So it wasn't, and I think a four-speed automatic transmission, front wheel drive. And uh, I remember starting the car, my, the windows were down and my dad was like, okay, now put it into reverse mm -hmm. and you, you know, this is, you know, you pull it back one little indentation and, uh, I stepped, I backed out of the driveway and then we lived on the hill. So I had to give a little bit of gas <laughs> and to get up the hill and I goosed it yep. and it sort of jumped forward, you know, as well as a car that does zero to 16, 11 seconds could jump forward, yeah. <laughs> but it was like. I had never realized that cars were that strong. Um, from a passenger perspective, the car just drives you around all day long. And when you're a kid, you don't really care or think about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, this car just, it felt heavy. It felt substantial. It was very mechanical. And, uh, and I remember going up the street, coming around the cul-de-sac and coming back down again. And it was just, I was 14 years old. And at that point, I said, now I can't wait to drive. Yeah, and uh, it was just almost how, describing the the mechanical, the power, how everything worked really, really well. I look back and I'm like, wow, 1979, 95,000 wasn't really the pinnacle of the automotive um, <laughs> no. engineering feats, but yeah. it was just that every single car offered me something that I couldn't find on my bicycle or my skateboard. Yeah, no kidding. You did a better job than I did, Michael. Same situation here, although I got to back our Vista Cruiser out of the... <laughs> and we lived in at a tight alley, and there were these big eucalyptus trees, and I scraped that back right fender against a eucalyptus tree, and it had that fake wood trim, you know? Remember the mm -hmm. old uh, Oldsmobile oh, Vista yeah. Cruiser? And I was so freaked out, and I pulled forward, and then I kind of maneuvered it back and I came back in and gave him the keys, didn't say a word. And that night when my parents were asleep, I went out in the garage with all my testers model paints and mixed the colors and repainted the little wow. bit. Yeah, the grain. And my, my parents never knew that. Um, I told this story a couple of times on Cars Yeah, and my mom listened and called me the first time she heard it. She says, hey, I didn't know you did that to the Vista Cruiser. I'm like, well, my uh, artistic skills were pretty good back then. But yeah, I did a little better than you. That, that spatial That's awareness funny. on a big vehicle when you're a kid <laughs> is kind of a tough one, right? Oh, yeah. And we joke about the, uh, you know, I've got this Cadillac Alante, And today I'm so acclimated to driving cars with late model cars with these 360 cameras that literally you really don't even have to look over your shoulder anymore. And oh, now you know, I jumped back in the Elante. I took the Elante to the grocery store last night and I backed in a parking space and I was subliminally waiting for the beep. I know. Waiting you got to be careful. Beep, 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 beep. Yep. And Never all of a sudden I hear the noise and it was the sound of a twig hitting the back trunk. And I was like, oh, that's the old school backup sensors, the trees. <laughs> the in the back tree. of the yeah, the and fire the, hydrant, the rock. And I realized that, wait a second, okay, those are the bushes impaling my taillights. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. A different type of technology back then. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Well, that's a nice segue into my next question, and that is a really special car in your life. Now, I mentioned again, you and I love Porsche, Mark. We've had Porsches. You have Porsches. Uh, you have that Cadillac Elante. I always ask, what is the most <laughs> special car that's been in your life? Now, this can't be cars you've driven because you could never choose. You've driven so many cool cars. This is a car you've owned. Now, it could be a car from the past. It could be a current car or a car you're looking at in the future. What would it be? Okay, this is a car that uh, I no longer own, but I believe you still own. And it's a 1986 Porsche 930. Yep. Yeah, mine's in 87, but I remember your turbo. Yep. I had um, a white 
nine thirty. Um, Grand Prix white with black leather interior, four speed manual, of course. Yep. And uh, two hundred eighty two horsepower, three point three liter flat six, I believe it yep. has. Yeah. And um, you know, I bought that car back in two thousand two <clears throat> when I was, in, I think, I was thirty five years old at the time. It was my first Porsche. Way to jump in with both feet. Yeah. And uh, I used to, in the beginning, when it was still really new to me, I would road trip it. And I would take it out to Death Valley every other year. Nice. And uh, just driving that car, the air conditioning was, you know, it would. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hamster breathing. The lines hard. were too porous. <laughs> yeah. yeah it would bear, it, there was no way it was going to cool you in Death Valley. But I'd go out there in April yeah. and when it was 80, 85 degrees. And I remember blasting across the desert, windows down. The car had a smell to it. It had a sound to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, manual steering, manual brakes, and it was just so engaging and uh, so raw and so visceral. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just yes, it was a 930. Yes, it was the Widowmaker. Yes, it was one of the fastest accelerating cars at the time and back in the mid 80s. But it was also so emotional and the feedback to the driving experience combined with a hot desert wind. The fact that when you're in Death Valley, there are no other sounds. It's just the the car, car, your breathing, the wind over the mirrors, and obviously there's a lot of wind noise in that car. But it was just, I miss the 930 for that reason. And uh, I've sold it and I bought two new cars with the amount of money I made on the 930, but it was just such an emotional car. You, You get in it, Mark, and I remember walking out to the garage and you'd open the door, those thick, heavy gaskets, and yep. you'd shut the door, and you didn't even need to start it. You know, you didn't even need to turn your left wrist and switch the key because you could smell it. Oh, yeah. And it would just over be you, you, your body. It was like walking in, your mom has made fresh cookies. You walk in the house and you're, you're already salivating because you already know what the cookie is going to taste like before you even walk into the kitchen. Okay. With the 930, you sit in it. And you can already drive it just with your nose. So, yeah, cool yeah, you know, I understand mine's still sitting in my garage. And when I take, <laughs> in fact, I, when we're done here, I'm going to take it out for a little drive. We've got a little dry week here. So take it out for a little exercise. And when my wife comes home and I've driven that car and she shuts the garage door, she gets out. She first thing she says is you drove the turbo today, didn't you? It's a smell that after you drive that car, the warm mm-hmm. engine and everything, all that oil stuff. And my car doesn't leak oil, but it just smells that in the inside of the car, the ping of the door when you shut it. Yeah, all those things, most definitely. Yeah, when you sold that car, I'm like, no, you're selling the 930. You can't do that. But um, yeah, so I have to ask you this, Michael, because I go through these gyrations every once in a while. The car is worth a lot of money. Yeah, I could Mm -hmm. sell it and buy a couple Porsches or one really nice newer car. Should I keep my car? You know, the reason I sold it, I've got a three-car garage. And uh, my kids were at the age where they were going to be driving. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that the 930 was just too much for a 16-year-old boy Mm -hmm. or a 16-year-old girl. And I wasn't driving it as much uh, because I was more worried about the other, I mean, this sounds bad, but the other cars on the road, you know, being T-boned by a texting 16-year-old kid. I'm the same way. Yes. And uh, so I converted that 930 into a brand new, you know, when I sold it in 2018, you know, a 2018 Porsche 911 Carrera with all the airbags. And um, I can happily say that I tossed the keys to my son and his girlfriend of the Carrera the other day. And they disappeared for two to three hours and came back with big smiles on their face. And, you know, and I was comfortable. Yeah. And I don't think I loved the 930. Had I had a seven car garage, it would have been in slot six or seven. Okay. You know, covered and happy. But I just don't have the garage space. So I said, you know what? And I'm cheating now. I'm looking across out my window at my driveway and I've got three or two cars parked. I've got the garage full of cars and I've got more cars parked in the driveway. So, uh, But I miss it. But it had a time and it had an era. I owned that car for 14, 15 years and I've got wonderful memories. So it, it served its purpose. Well, see, my kids are older and we've passed those days. Uh, where there wasn't enough room in the garage. So all you folks out there that think Orange Crush is for sale, don't email me. It's not for sale. Uh, <laughs> leave me alone. Someday, someday somebody will offer me the big golfer's check. That's what's happened with every car I've had. Been very lucky. Made money on every collector car I've had because somebody offered me some obscene amount of money for it. Some of them I've looked back and said, I wish I still had it. But for right now, yeah, I think I'm going to just 
hang on to the 930, but uh, you never know. You never know. So, all right, here's a bit of an introspective question for you, Michael. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car, not what you want to be, but it's your personal attributes manifest as a vehicle, what would Michael Hardly be? But the more important part of this question is why? Let's see. Um, you know, everybody wants to be a, yeah, a Lamborghini. See, it's not what you want to like be. That, I, you know, what I think I I most express myself as would be probably a base rear-wheel drive Porsche Carrera. Okay. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I'm very talented, very capable, but I'm I never feel like I'm the smartest guy in the world. Uh, in the room, I'm never the most educated person in the room. So I'm never the turbo. I'm never the, the GT3 RS. I'm never the GT2. But uh, I'm capable of uh, – I like to surround myself with really, really smart, intelligent people to bring myself up. I like and, that. And <laughs> uh, I believe the Carrera 2 is – you know, I've got one. It's very talented. I can hang with my GT3. I can hang with my GT2 RS buddies in the canyons. Uh, but at the same time – you know, I'm not conceited and I don't, you know, I don't think that I need to be, I don't need the spotlight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's probably career, career too. Is, that, is just, that your car that's in shock? Yeah, that's what I've got right now, career too. And I, and I joke because I've got carbon ceramic brakes, which is one of the weirdest combinations. You know, Porsche laughs at me. It's like, how many people have a base Carrera yeah. with carbon ceramic brakes? And just because I'm a brake guy, yeah. I just obsess with brakes, but I look at that because I've got some really, really strong talents, much like my car has really, really strong brakes. Um, and uh, nice. so probably career, a yeah. career two. Nicely said. I like that. It's like last time I was down at John Wilhoyd's shop and he had just bought himself a T, uh, newer model mm-hmm. T. And he said, you know, I don't need the wings and all the fancy stuff, but I just like some of the, yeah, and if you know John Wilhoyd, he's a very modest, humble kind of quiet guy, you know, but does an incredible restoration work on 356 and early 911s and 912s. Uh, just a master. Uh, he built a car that I owned for a while. So yeah, but I love your car. I love the color of your car. Yeah, very, very nice. I, I had forgotten though that you had the carbon fiber brake option. So, but that makes sense. Nicely done. All right. <laughs> we're entering the last lap, a kind of a lightning round, quick questions, quick answers. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your successes in life? Always being on time, being reliable. Sounds crazy. No, no, it's good. Few people are these days, I'll tell you. It drives me crazy. Well, every time I get frustrated with that, my wife will say, look, Mark, not everybody is like you, so calm down. I'm like, well, why can't they be? <laughs> <laughs> I like to be on time. It's a sign of respect. I think it just show, it shows respect. Yeah. It shows that, you know, when, when you're on time, you're telling the other person that their time is valuable. Exactly. Um, and it, to me, it's just this subliminal message. When someone's on time, I smile. And uh, it's it's instant respect. If you've never met a person for the very first time ever and you say, I'll meet you at 930 at Starbucks, if you're there at 928, uh, you're telling them, hey, you know what? You're We're going to start off with some mutual respect. Yeah. You know, I tell you, doing five shows a week, I sit here when a guest is supposed to call in and I watch the clock tick to the time and I go, <laughs> I wonder if they're going to call. And of course, you were spot on, of course. Most most of my guests always are. Uh, I've been stood, stood up a few times, but uh, out of 1,743 people, not too bad. Now, if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, and you've probably met most of them, living or deceased, who would that person be? I'm going to probably go back 150 years oh. and go back to Carl Benz. Carl Benz. Yes. Uh, he invented, he's credited with a patent uh, motor car, yep. arguably the world's first uh, combustion powered automobile. And uh, I had the fortunate opportunity to actually ride in a Benz patent motor wagon replica because I don't believe a real one exists anymore. But back in the Mercedes Museum in Germany, yep. I was able to climb on board and putt around. Really? Uh, somebody else's pilot. Yeah. Somebody else is driving it. One of the museum curators is driving it. We drove around the parking lot and it was just such a fascinating experience. The Where the seating position is so tall and high. Yeah. But then you have to remember, this is back when people rode horses. Right. And if you've ever sat on a horse... You're way off the ground. Nobody was thinking about cornering G's or low center of gravity, but it'd be cool to have a conversation with him about where did he think his invention was going to go. Yeah. You know, it's interesting nobody's mentioned him. You talk about sitting high. I got to do a, a tour at the Ironstone Concours in a 1917 IndyCar race car. Mm-hmm. 
and where you had to have a co-driver pumping the fuel. I, it was my job to keep the fuel pr pressure up. I never <coughs> felt so unsafe in a vehicle in my life. And I've been in some pretty crazy cars, race vintage cars, but being up that high. But you know, I'd love to join him in that talk would be Bertha, his wife, who, right. yeah, most people who don't stole know. stole the car and went on the road trip. I know. First person <laughs> to take a car on a road trip was a woman, took her husband's car and her son's with her and went for a little drive, a long drive, 100, 111 miles. I believe uh, it ran on alcohol, rubbing alcohol. So she stopped at a pharmacy yeah, to I know. get for quote unquote fuel. So that's technically the very first fuel stop. Yeah. And technically she's the first person to ever quote pump gas into a car. I know. And, uh, so yeah. yes, I want her there too. And she, you know, and I wonder what the, the relationship was, okay, hon, you stole the car. It's I know. the first one in the world. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wouldn't that have been something? Oh, my gosh. What's the best automotive advice someone else ever offered to you? Uh, this is physic has to do physically with a car. It was uh, drive the car often and drive the car hard. You know, very yeah. important for older Porsches. Uh, I've, mm -hmm. I've learned over the many old Porsches I've had is they do not like sitting around at all. And when I bought my turbo, it had very low miles. It had been sitting for a long time and I had to do quite a bit of work to get all the leaks from stopping because everything had dried up. It just been sitting Far too long, flat spotted tires and had its original tires on it too, which are crazy. But uh, yeah, drive well, your car. They like it. Yeah, and you, you have to drive it. Uh, you know, I've got five cars right now and I make sure that each one of them is driven um, at least once a month, at least 100 miles. Yep. And, uh, and, you know, fully warm it up just to get the car exercising. And the best analogy I've got is you've got a, an Olympic athlete. And you can't send him up to his bedroom and say, I'll talk to you in another three years. <laughs> You've got to get out of bed. You know, how do you feel? You know, we've been in bed, you know, you just got to get out and exercise. And cars are a lot like people. They like to be exercised. They like to be driven hard because you want to clean them out. Remember, the engineer designed that engine to go to 6,500 RPM or 8,000 RPM. So you don't want to just drive it around um, on town. You want to get it on the open highway and have fun with it. Drive it hard. Yeah, absolutely. Now, there are great resources out there for all of us these days. Obviously, carexpert.com is the first one I'm going to put on your recommendations. Is there another go-to that you find yourself looking at quite often? Uh, I am using – everybody always bags on Wikipedia, but I do still like Wikipedia to get a lot of history of the cars, I like automotive news, mm -hmm. uh, to get some of the current events. Uh, I also like YouTube. Because you've got a lot of characters on YouTube these days, a lot of deep dive information. If you want to figure out how to change the uh, the rear pull down motor on a Cadillac Alante, yep. somebody's got a video. I know. <laughs> if you want to find out the difference between an uh, N zero and an N one rated tire for a Porsche, somebody's got a video. So YouTube is a really good resource. Um, I don't know, you know, ninety percent of it's accurate, maybe, <laughs> but I always like to hear other people's take. YouTube. Yeah. You can learn how to extract your own teeth on YouTube if that's what you want to do. How about a book, Michael? Now I'm going to mention your book that you did with the fine folks, Rob Dickinson at Singer, because I love that book. And, and seriously, it's the only book that's sitting on my coffee table right now. Uh, it's my dream book. And when the lottery gets as big as it is right now, that's why I go and blow two bucks on a ticket because I wrote the word <laughs> singer. I did last night. We're recording this when the big 800 and something million dollar now it's up to almost a billion dollars. I did write that, but alas, they did not pick my numbers. I did win four bucks though. So I got, I doubled my money. That's good to start. Yeah, to start, but uh, not quite the uh, 860 million I was counting on. Uh, but is there a book that you've read? That Am you... I allowed to pick my own book? Well, of course. And I'm, I'm going to already put that on there. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to stick with my book. And the good news is, uh, you know, when Rob Dickinson initially released the book, he only made a few thousand copies yep. and they sold out pretty quickly. Yep. And now you can go back and they've reprinted the book literally this month. So you can go find the book again. I believe it's only 99 bucks. So smoking deal. Yeah. Actually, I've got a couple, a couple of those books and I bought some for friends as well. Yeah. I call it my dream book. So uh, there you go. I'll put a listing of that on Michael Harley's show notes page. And if you missed my first talk with Michael way back five, six years ago, you can go back and listen to that and, and hear how much he's matured over time. So, and me too, <laughs> hopefully. All right. We're up to the checkered flag here, Michael. This is a bit of a tough question. I'm going to buy you a collector car today, something fun, but there's a couple rules that might make this a challenge for you. One is you can't sell it to uh, fund the impending college education for your daughter, because I know she's next in line. I oh, want yeah. you to drive it, but that's not a problem for you. But here's the hard part. 
If you could only have one collector car in your garage, you have to get rid of the Cadillac and all the others. You can keep the Porsche. We'll call that your daily driver. What car am I going to buy for Michael Harley today, considering all the cars he's driven? That is the toughest question we ever get as uh, people in the automotive industry. People always ask me, what's my favorite car? And I turn around immediately and say, what's your favorite food? Yeah. And they go, well, I, I got a lot of favorite foods. And mm -hmm. I said, great. And uh, that is such a challenge because I look at cars like shoes. And if someone says, you can only have one pair of shoes the rest of your life, you're going to have to find something like a tennis shoe. Yeah. It's kind of comfortable, sort of a jack of all trades. My answer is probably going to be a Porsche 959. And just because it was such a halo car of its era, same time when the, the 930 was out, and um, it was all-wheel drive, Kevlar bodied, uh, twin turbocharged. It sort of pushed every single button, analog brakes, first generation, uh, hollow wheels. The, the, uh, the pneumatics of the tire were extended into the spokes of the wheels just to give it a more of an air chamber. Uh, just technically a masterpiece, completely outdated today, but just something that was just so cool. You don't see them. Rare, interesting importing stories. Just 959. Stick with the 959. Now, we've got this. Uh, I'm sure you're friends with him, too. There's a little guy named, uh, I don't want to call him a little guy. Let me do that again. There's a guy, there's, <laughs> there's a guy named Bruce Canapa. Uh, a little guy. Yeah. Just north of you, <laughs> yeah, that is uh, doing something kind of special. With 959s, he's calling, I believe, the SC. Uh, would you like that version? Because I've been there, I've seen what he's doing with them, and if you could make a 959 better, I think Bruce is probably the only guy that can do it, but still keep the essence of the vehicle. Of course, he's the guy that made it possible for us in the U.S. to buy them here because you couldn't, couldn't even bring them here for a long time. Is that okay if I get you one of those? Uh, Mark, you bring up an excellent point, and uh, Bruce is probably – he's probably credited with saving the 959, and yeah, he does a bunch of really incredible modifications. He replaces the, the damper system, which was really troublesome, very sophisticated, the Germans did back in the 80s with a, um, a more – I think it's a practical coilover suspension design. He changes the engine, does a whole bunch of really intelligent stuff. Even the wheels in the original 959 required those special – tires and yeah. now he puts conventional dot type rims so he can run normal tires yeah he is his sc as he calls it a 959 sc i believe they're over a million bucks oh yeah and uh, they are absolutely if you've been to a shop they are spectacular oh yeah yeah they're insane uh, and yes i would take one in a heartbeat because you can make it a daily driver and that i kid you not if if i ever uh, hit the lottery that you're playing for me if I hit the lottery, <laughs> I would go buy one of Bruce's cars because it's a piece of art. And um, it's just – if any of your listeners have a chance, go check out Bruce Canepa's uh, 959 SC. Just if you're a car guy, even if you're a muscle car guy, you can appreciate the level of her work he does. He literally strips them down to just the VIN plate. Yeah, it's an incredible. When I was last at his shop, he had one they had just finished that was in a liquid metallic silver Oh my and gosh. This was a special color Porsche did that when he told Porsche he wanted to paint a car this color, they said, Well, you can't. It's too difficult. And he goes, Well, you don't <laughs> tell Bruce Canapa you can't. Uh, so he figured it out and they painted this. And you literally, it looked like, remember when you're a kid, if you ever, don't tell my mom this, you broke open a thermometer and you poured the mercury out and, you, <laughs> and it rolled around in your hand. Like, yeah, stuff could kill you, but little did you know it. <laughs> That's what that car looked like. With those curves, it looked like mercury that you could just reach into it. So, yeah, right. that's nice choice. Yeah, that's another one. I think I'm going to start writing on, you know, I very rarely buy a lottery ticket, but of course this week I had to just because, you know, it's fun to fantasize. I think I'm going to add the word Canapa SC to that singer. I'll get two, one for me, one for you, and a singer. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll go for a drive. We'll have some fun in the canyons, for sure. You have taken me on another great ride here today, Michael. Thank you for coming back to Cars yeah and sharing your next great adventure at carexpert.com. Before I let you go, drive off into the beautiful hillsides you have there to drive your 959 SC. Would you offer us a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance? Yeah, you know, it, it starts out, uh, we initially talked about challenging yourself. And uh, I try to go into every day with, a, you know, try to wake up and put on a smile because uh, it's contagious to other people around you yeah. and challenge yourself because, um, you know, I've started my current career was started when I was 49 years old. And, uh, you know, you're never too old 
you can teach an old dog new tricks. You're never too old to start something new and different. So Absolutely, young 49-year-old. You're just a kid <laughs> from my side of the fence. What are the best ways for people to learn more about you and what you're doing? I'll put carexpert.com, obviously, on there. I know you're big on social media. Yeah, I've got uh, michaelharley.com, one word. And uh, follow me on Instagram, just Michael Harley. M-I-C-H-A-E-L-H-A-R-L-E-Y. All right. I'll put links to those on Michael's show notes page. I encourage you to follow Michael. You will salivate when he posts all the cool cars that he's talking about and gives you expert guidance on. I do every time he posts something. So jealous, but I fun. I'm living my life through you, Michael. Thank you for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing this new venture in your life. So happy for you. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you, no doubt, down the road. It was a pleasure, Mark. This was great. Today's vehicles are essentially computers on wheels, and it takes more than a wrench and oil to keep them humming. That's why Cars Yeah! supports TechForce Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to driving tomorrow's workforce of skilled technicians forward. Techs keep our cars, trucks, airplanes, and fleets rolling. Yet there's a massive tech shortage because many young people don't know it's no longer a blue-collar job. Today, it's a new-collar career. It involves computers, technology, it's in high demand, you get paid really well, and you can live and work anywhere in the country. I know you're passionate about cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and you can help pass that passion on to the next generation of techs so our rides keep rolling down the road. Visit techforce.org today and learn how. Did you know that Cars Yeah! is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership, according to Libsyn, the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States? That's right. And Cars Yeah! is the only five-day-a-week automotive-focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah! is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars Yeah! has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars Yeah! every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique in very personal way, well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyad.com or through the website at carsyad.com today to learn more. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to carsyad.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!